Hello everybody, my name is Gurprasad Suri. Today we will be covering epistasis. Epistasis is a cross between heterozygous genotypes, such as... Right. So if I cross these genotypes, I would get a 9-3-3-1 ratio. If you guys don't um, believe me, you guys can feel free to do a Punnett square. But in this genotype, I would get this. Ratio. This is something you guys will have to memorize. And there we go. Now, from this comes epistasis. How do I, if I have a 12 3 1, which is dominant epistasis, then it would be these 12 3 1. Okay. So automatically, you guys need to know that 1231 is dominant epistasis, 934 is recessive epistasis, and 927 is complementary epistasis. There are um, special ones, 133, which is like double dominant epistasis. For that, you really don't need to know the name for, and I'll show you why. Because this all all, all this is is pattern recognition. For example, if I have a 1231, I can see my gene A is equaling gene A. Right? See that right here. If this is equaling, if if this is um, equaling, if two dominant genes like this is equaling, so in this pattern, this is a clear indication of dominant epistasis. And so you will be giving it this type of pattern right here. Cool? For this example, I, I don't have a really clear example of B. Because B is this. This doesn't tell me anything. So obviously I will be looking at gene A, not this. Because this is just saying, yeah, dominant equals uh, recessive. But I don't know if the dominant is masking the recessive. In this case, it is the dominant epistasis. So the dominant is masking the recessive. So give it that. Now if I'm doing a pathway here. I'll scroll down. If I'm doing a pathway here. I will draw two arrows like this and go here, go here. Now you want to ask yourself, if this is dominant epistasis 12 3, 1 ratio, then the dominant is doing the masking. Dominant epistasis. Epistasis is masking. So think about it. If I'm masking something, then I'm in front of it, right? Like my hand's masking my face, hence it's in front of it. So I'll just write that. Um, the dominant gene is going to be in front, so gene A here, leaving gene B. Well, these signs right here indicate repression. This is repressing the capital A to become a lowercase a. So, if I'm repressing it, it's safe to assume that both gene A and gene B are repressed in this genotype, then I would just get this, right? Which would be A B B. Cool. And in this case, let's let me just assign these guys colors. Let's just say this is black, yellow, white. This information will be as uh, you guys can get from the exam. So this is white. Well, now think about it. Gene B is being repressed, and gene A, well, gene B hasn't been repressed yet, but gene A has already been repressed. So, if gene A has already been repressed and gene B hasn't, what does that get you guys? Let's go up. Let's look. Let's go up and see. It gets me yellow. So, this is my genotype for yellow. And, the, and this is my pathway. Cool? Cool. Gene A. If I go back up, I see that, again, dominant is going to be in front. So, dominant is going to be in front. That's another way you guys can memorize it. So, in this case, my dominant is going to be this. It's going to be black. Cool? Cool. And it could also be A to BB. It could be both. Let's move on.
Okay, so now we're going to do recessive epistasis. Alright. For this, the pattern you guys need to recognize is this. If you get this, this is a clear indication this is recessive epistasis, and you will be indicating it by an, um, a downward arrow when you draw your pathway. This downward arrow means initiation, right? Not initiation, more of, more. I more think activation. Yeah, that's the word. <laughs> you think of it as activation, but I always think about that I'm getting, I'm promoting a, a gene. So I'm promoting little a to big A, right? So if I give you the, again, 9331 ratio, epistasis will always refer to a 9331 ratio. Even the modifications actually take this ratio into account. If you do get a 933 ratio, that just means that one has been killed, which is a lethal gene. So if you instantly can recognize that's an epistasis problem, I would instantly jot down the 9331 ratio. You know that little dash here? Perfect. And you get this. Now, in this case, uh, uh, recessive epistasis has a, a, geno a phenotype, phenotypical ratio as 934. All of these dominant and epi recessive epistasis have the genotypic ratio of 9331, but the phenotypic ratios vary. So, 9, 3, 4. Okay, see that right here? If I'm doing recessive epistasis, then I automatically know that my recessive is going to be in front. My recessive is doing the masking. And I notice the pattern, like I said, told you guys, right here. That's the indication that it's going to be. So my recessive is in front, so gene A here, I could write gene A, making this gene B. And yes, it is true uh, for, if you have a 934 ratio and, it, and it's following this genotype um, presented in front of you, then it will always have the same pathway, but there are modifications, so it's not best to memorize every single case example you can get. Rather, think about it and just get it fast by recognizing patterns. In this case, if I'm activating gene A and down the line I'll be activating gene B, it is safe to assume that neither of these are activated. We have A, B, B. Cool. And let me give them color again. This time I'm just going to give them random color. Orange, white, and pink. Why not? It doesn't matter. So A, A, B, B is going to be lowercase. So that's going to be pink. Gene A is now being activated, so it's being promoted, so little a is turning into big A, and BB is still small. Nothing's happened to my BB. And look at that, it gives me white. So it's this, right here. So white. Now I'm activating gene B. Gene A is already activated, and now gene B is activated. This will instantly give me orange. And this is the correct pathway. And it will tell you. So if an exam question is like, uh, what's the, um, here's a couple of data. You create your 9331 ratio because you got it memorized. You label all of them. But now it's saying, what's the genotype of white? It's going to be this. That's just an example of a problem you guys can get. Let's go into complementary. Complementary is the easiest one you guys can get. All the modification ratios, once you're able to do pattern recognition, they don't get hard. So if I have complementary epistasis, again I have a 9331 ratio. Right, this is my 9 3 3 rate, uh, 1 ratio. Complementary is 9 to 7. So always be this. 
it's no exception. Let's just say um, my 9 is red and my complementary would be colorless. What's happening here is what ha what's happening here scientifically is that without a, without a single gene, right? Without gene A and B, it can't turn red. It will always remain colorless or stay the same. And this happens in your body. Whoa, just freaked out right there. That's good. Automatically, I, I want to see, do I recognize any patterns I told you guys about? And yeah, there's right here. There's a recessive epistasis right here. And there is a, just change colors here, another one right here. See that? Both of these will be downward. So that's how I figured out that both of these uh, arrows are going to face downward. So now I'm going to create my pathway. Automatically, I know that I'm activating both eventually. So if I'm activating both gene A and B, then this is going to be here. So this is red. Right. And I look at my, if I put gene A here, and gene B here. For gene A, it's safe to assume that gene A hasn't been activated yet, nor has gene B, because that happens later down in my chain. So I have a ABB, colorless, right here. right here for now. And I get, I activate gene A. Right, and then right there, back again. So you guys can see how even my pathway is indicating I'm going from colorless to colorless to red. Okay, because it needs both um, dominant gene A and dominant gene B. I'm going to give you guys now a modification ratio. Right, and there's a lot of modification ratios out there that your professor can give you. But just remember, when you're doing modification, it's just, it's the same thing, you're just looking for chin ratio. You, you're still going to always have your 9331 and you're just looking for the patterns I've told you about. Dominant and um, repressive. In this case, I will give you a 13-3 ratio. Something like this. Good. So I'm giving you this type of ratio. 13 3, like, like I said, in this case, I'm going to say uh, from the p problem you narrow down, this is going to be the ratio. This is going to be the ratio. That's 12. 13. It's going to be this. And 3 is going to be this. Okay, so hence it's 13, 23. Do you guys see that? Good. So automatically, I know it's a 13 3 ratio, and this is advantageous for me. The more weird ratios I get, the easier it's. It is for me to identify patterns for both gene A and gene B. It's less memory, it's just, hey, can you do this for me? I'm giving you a pattern. For example, here. Let's see that. This is this. And I'm only working within the colors, as you can see. And ab on the above part two, I only work within my um, third, like I'm only working within my 13. I'm not considering my three in um, the orange color three in this. And in this case, I'm just going to say this is 13 in is indica indication of purple and o orange is indication of orange, right? If I'm giving it as phenotypes. Perfect. Now, do I notice any other patterns? Yeah. Get orange here. I notice a BB here. And I notice a little B here. So. What are these patterns? 
Well, this is a, this is the same thing I saw in my dominant epistasis. This the, this is the pattern for repression, and this the B is the pattern for activation. Got it? Cool. Now I'm going to draw my pathway. I have two genes, so two arrows. I am going from um, gene A is being repressed and gene B is being activated in this case. And I'm trying to get my orange here. Right. So, if I look at the problem, I know I know that if I repress gene A and activate gene B here, and these are corresponding, I would get gene A is being repressed, so it's safe to assume it's activated right now. And gene B hasn't been activated yet, so it's safe to assume I have this ratio right here. All right, so this is going to be my purple. And then I'm going to go here. Gene A is repressed now. Gene B hasn't been activated yet. So still purple. Orange is going to be gene A both repressed and gene B activated. I see how I got that. Now this pattern, this modification ratio right here, is in this case example I just gave you, is known as double dominant. It, it's known as double dominant epistasis. And so it is, it is it, the name doesn't really matter what what this is this is it does have dominant epistasis in the name of it so you're like oh dominant gene in front which in this case there is a dominant gene in front but even if you d couldn't recognize that it's fine you just need to notice the patterns and solve it like that so hopefully this clarifies a lot of um, concepts for you guys thank you for watching